So as we all know, it is every man's dream to rotate your character and then have a part rotate with you, right? I'm sure you've thought of this at some point or another. So the way this can be done is by adding an align orientation. So it's very similar, to, if you've seen my video, it's very similar to align position, except, except for position, it's for orientation, right? So what I'll do is I'll just quickly go over the main properties of align orientation, and then I'll show you how to actually script align orientation to, you know, work for like, you know, your character and so on. Mode I'll get to in a bit. Uh, attachment zero is going to be the thing that's actually going to be rotating, right? So attachment zero is going to be for the part that you actually want to be rotating. And attachment one is what's going to be moving independently, right? So, so for, for my example, what I'll do is I'm going to make a part, right? So I'll actually make one right now. Um, and then I'll put an attachment inside of it, right? So what we want to do, our goal is that we want when our character joins the game, whenever the character rotates, we want the part to rotate in the same way. So if the character begins rotating right, we want the part to also rotate right. But as you can see in like in this example, the part is the thing that's going to be rotating. So like like we're going to be controlling our character, right? We want the align orientation to basically take the rotation from my character, take that input and then output that rotation to apply that force on the part. So when you want to apply force to something, that's going to be attachment zero. When you're taking the force from something like my character, that's going to be attachment one. You have um, compliance. So you have max angular velocity, max torque. These are limits, right? So th like they cannot go above these numbers. As you can see, the max angular velocity is infinite. Max torque is 10,000. Um, so th this basically applies, this limits the torque and this limits the angular velocity. In case you don't know what those are, you can just basically think of them as like force and acceleration. So these basically determine like how fast the part is able to move to achieve its desired rotation, okay? So by default, these are fine. So I would leave them as is, but if you wanted to like move slower, that's what I would use, right? And responsiveness is basically how long does it take for the part to actually begin moving once your character has moved, okay? So if this is high, the part responds almost instantly. If this is lower, then the part, you know, like the character rotates, the part takes a little bit and then it begins to rotate, right? So the lower the number is, the lower is the lower the responsiveness is. Then we have rigidity enabled, okay? Which by it just just uh, to show you, if you enable this, this actually will remove um, these properties, okay? So if you enable this, these properties are gone. The goal of this, if this is true, it will ignore all the other physics to try and complete the rotation as quickly as possible, okay? So if, if you want your rotation to actually be like physically accurate, then keep this off. But if your goal is just to have it happen as fast as possible, and you know, you don't really care much about any like potential physical physics issues, then you should keep this on, okay? By default, this is off. So I will keep this off. We have a line type, which a line type basically determines like on what axes is the change happening, right? So all axes means it's going to happen on, you know, both the X, the Y, I mean, not both, th thrice, I don't know, on all three axes, right? But then these axes, um, so this will only happen parallel. This will only be perpendicular. This will only be the look at, but by default, it's all axes. So I would, I would just recommend you use all axes. The mode is, um, I, it either uses two attachments or it uses one attachment. And if it, if it only uses one attachment, then you actually get this other property, which um, is the target orientation, right? So you can either use two attachments where attachment zero is going to be is going to follow the rotation of attachment one. If you use one attachment, then you still have attachment zero. But instead of following the rotation of attachment one, it's going to follow the rotation of whatever C frame that you give it. OK. Um, and then you can like do, you know, axes and, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, so reaction torque enabled. If if this is set to true, because remember, like I said before, all of the actual like orientation, all of like the rotation is only for attachment zero, right? If we were to somehow rotate this part, our character wouldn't actually be rotating, right? Because the only thing that's going to be rotating is attachment zero. But if you set this to true, then both will be rotating, okay? So if... If let's say attachment zero is rotating and, and if this is true, then attachment one will also rotate in the same way as attachment zero is. OK, but if this is set to false, then only attachment zero is going to be rotating and attachment one will not rotate 
unless like by external forces such as the player controlling the character right and i believe that's all the properties so i'll actually show you how we can use this in an actual script okay so i'll delete this so we have our part we have the attachment right i'll make a i'll just make a script in the workspace okay and i'll say game dot players dot player added connect function player so whenever a new player joins the game we're gonna get we're gonna fire this event we're gonna you know do something in here and it actually gives us the player who joined the game now in a real game scenario we probably don't want to just have one part because what if a, a second player joins what then right uh but again just for this example because we're we're implying that only i'm going to be joining i'll just have one part um so i'll say local i'll actually say part attachment because we don't care about the part we just want the attachment right is equal to workspace dot part dot attachment okay so we have that then we need to get the attachment of the player's character right which you, we can either add our own attachment right so we could you know create like do instance dot new attachment or we could just use a pre-existing one so if we look at the character you can use any I, i'll just yeah so the head has a hat attachment okay so it has an attachment already built in that's called hat attachment so let's actually just use that okay so first we need to get the player's character which i'll do by saying local car is equal to player character or in case the player character is still loading because that sometimes happens right like the player joins and then you know their character is still being loaded and if we just leave this as is and the character hasn't loaded yet this will cause us an error so we'll say okay the, the, the this character variable is either the player character but if this doesn't exist yet then we'll say or player dot character added added dot wait i mean colon wait so what we're saying is okay it's either the player character or if this doesn't exist yet then it's going to be this so it's going to wait for the character and then give it to us okay so in so like we get the so like we ensure that the character is actually loaded then we can say local car attachment is equal to car dot head dot hat attachment okay there we go and then i'll say local align rotation or orientation whatever you want is equal to instance dot new align orientation so we're creating a brand new item okay um and this is where you can actually change its uh per, like all of its properties so you can change its responsiveness you can change the max torque you can change the align type it's you can change the um rigidity enabled anything you want right all i want to change are just the attachments though so atta um, attachments there we go attachment zero is the thing that's going to be actually rotating which is going to be our part so i'm going to set that equal to part attachment and then the other attachment is going to be the characters attachment so car attachment and the last thing to do is just set its parent to the workspace because if it's not in the workspace then it's not actually gonna work so it has to be in the workspace um somewhere right it can be inside the part just as long as it's inside the workspace and not in like players or whatever then we're going to be fine um and let's see so that should be good so if i play the game right now hopefully no errors will be brought up as you can see we have our part over there right if i start rotating the part yeah there we go so the part is going to be rotating as well so as you can see when i rotate it rotates here when i rotate here it rotates here and as you can see it doesn't happen the moment i rotate right so if i were to rotate if i were to turn my character to the left the part will take a little bit and then it's gonna like react right so look boom boom so it doesn't it doesn't happen instantly boom 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 there we go and then the moment i stop it actually like doesn't stop instantly right so it's still there we go so it actually does like kind of you know like, like it doesn't stop right as i stop um and yeah, so from here you can try, you know, fun things. Like you would say, line rotation dot, um, what was that thing? It was like where you can set it to true. Um, the, what, what was it called? Oh yeah, reaction torque enabled. If I set this to true, I'm actually curious. Because if both of them are going to start having the rotation applied onto them, will I just create like an infinite, um, infinite rotation, an infinite accelerator? How will this work? So... There is your um, 
align rotation or align orientation tutorial. Check out my courses in the description and the comment section, and we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.